Welcome back to GA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. I'm delighted to be joined here as always by Matthew Hurley from the GA Statsman podcast to run through all this weekend's National Football League action. Definitely an action packed weekend as it always is in the National Football League. We're here to break down all 16 of the matches that took place and obviously looking at divisions one and two in more detail. And then obviously we'll get on to divisions three and four a little bit later. Plenty of big results in there. You think of Tyrone, they beat Kerry once again. Mayo are on fire at the minute and have taken a step closer towards a National League final. Big wins for the likes of Galway and Armagh as well, who've very much steered themselves away from any relegation trouble. And then looking further down the divisions, big results for the likes of Derry and Cork and, of course, Mead. Uh, getting out of jail in some ways with a draw against Limerick and Kildare very much in turmoil. Uh, Matthew, how's things with yourself? Uh I suppose an action pack day of uh, of sport and I suppose Cork won, Liverpool won, so you must be over the moon. Must be, uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me on again, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, brilliant results for both Cork and Liverpool, but uh, yeah, the, the local team in my uh, Razzle States lost today to Celtic 5 1. So uh, after being won at open half time, so um, there is the dominant on that, but yeah, Liverpool and Cork they definitely cheered me up there. That, that was unexpected what happened uh, with Liverpool. Now I can see you're celebrating the victory there, Aaron. Uh, which are a uh, nice last there, but um, yeah, a uh, brilliant, brilliant day of sport, and yeah, Cork, uh, the the momentum keeps rolling as well, and yeah, action packed weekend, even Kerry losing as well, so I suppose the good out weighs the bad. Yeah, I suppose all that was missing was was Dublin's win yesterday against mm-hmm. against Derry, but I suppose look, we'll we'll let it, we'll let Derry have it anyway. We'll let that result, you know, considering everything else that happened with. Kerry obviously getting beat and Mead and Kildare, I suppose, flattering to deceive. Um, not not a bad weekend at all. But yeah, I suppose starting with the Division 1 action then. And uh, yeah, anyone who's tuning in, make sure to, to get your comments in as well. Let us know your thoughts on the weekend's action. So uh, looking at Division 1, first of all, it was Tyrone 115, Kerry 29. Big, big result for uh, Tyrone. I mean, you think of the, the relegation trouble that they're in in the minute. It's just their second win of uh, of the season. Kerry's third defeat uh, of the season as well. So very disappointing result for them. They've now lost every away game in the National League. And uh, once again, it's happened for the third time in a row. Tyrone have beaten Kerry. Yeah, un- unbelievable, really. Like No one expected us. Even uh, John coming on my podcast last week, we were talking about Tyrone's defensive problems and attacking problems. And uh, lo and behold, they come out and uh, perform so well in this game. And it looked to be Kerry's game uh, early on Early on in uh, proceedings. They were 1-3 to a point up or something like that. And then some freak accidents from um, Sean Shane Ryan in the Kerry goal. And suddenly Tyrone are back in the game. And yeah, it was, it was level pinging at half time, and you would have thought Kerry would have kicked on then. But when you look at Kerry's scoring stats in the second half, they only scored 1 2 in the whole second half alone, two points in the last 15 minutes, which isn't good enough, really. And um, 1 1 from play, only Donald Sullivan and Paul Murphy scored from play. But them Tyrone players, Dan McCurry, Dark Hannibal, all them stood up. Joe Goose in there as well, a new player, definitely stood up for Tyrone today. And yeah, very, very good performance. And they proved a lot of doubters wrong. With that showing today, um, we say it in the last few weeks that Tyrone would definitely lose to Monaghan um, in the next few weeks. But seeing Monaghan's results, we'll talk about that later on, and Tyrone's results today, it definitely is back in the balance. So, yeah, brilliant, brilliant result for Tyrone. And as for Kerry, I know they're all Ireland champions. They look good last year with Shane Ryan, David Clifford, and Sean O'Shea have come back into the team now for these last few games. But even with those spinners in the team, they still failed to beat Tyrone. So I think... There's a bit of doubt in uh, the Kingdom Minds this weekend. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Mick Celtic says here, great wins for Armagh and Celtic. Great uh, great weekend all around. So definitely a, a very enjoyable one for Armagh and Celtic fans. Make no mistake about that one. And uh, yeah, as you said there, like I was watching the game <clears throat> and it was a strange game because like Tyrone had some good early signs, but it seemed like Kerry were very much in control and you know, it was a strange game for Shane Ryan as well because he made one or two brilliant saves, but then the goal was just it was kind of bizarre as to what actually happened. Like he, he had the ball and then all of a sudden it was in the back of the net. I don't know if you forgot, you know, which which goal he was sort of approaching or what was going on there, but it was definitely a little bit odd to say the least. But yeah, as you said, like Tyrone just gradually got momentum of the game. Uh, Dara McCurry again in, in very good form. And Dara Canavan has definitely sort of made himself the 
the homestay of this Tehran side. Like he's really sort of made himself the main man, and you know, like like all the talk really was about Rory Canavan before the start of this year, but Dara Canavan's been the one who's who's you know starting week in week out, and he and he stood up brilliantly again today. He did, yeah, and we were talking in the last few weeks about Darren Canavan and Darren McCurry carrying this Tyrone team, and it looks that way again today with Canavan scored two points and McCurry scoring three, and it definitely an introduction of Matty Donnelly coming back into the team scoring three points. That was a brilliant introduction, and to be honest, he actually improved Tyrone's forward line, so fair play to him, Joe Roos, as I said previously, David McGrew, uh, Conkel Patrick did well again today. Look, Tyrone were just up for the fight more than Kerry today. And I suppose, like, like after the last few weeks, and after multiple podcasts just degrading Tyrone the last few weeks, including myself, including uh, John John uh, with the famous quote that uh, it was almost like uh, the Red Sea was opening uh, with Tyrone's defence. And maybe the Tyrone players looked at it, looked at that. Well, um, would the Tyrone players really look at my podcast now? But at the same time, they might have just looked at John's quote there and might have had a bit of fire in the belly and... Win for Kerry today, in fairness, they, they did it, they got the win, and maybe there's an argument, like John actually said as well, that Jack O'Connor doesn't really care about the league, maybe there's that argument about Kerry as well, but look at Kerry's points, Tally, they're on four points, they're joint second from bottom now, so, like, it's a dangerous tactic from Jack O'Connor, they, Kerry need to watch themselves now, because if they don't, if they're not careful in the next few weeks, I think they play Ross Common in the next few weeks, and I think they're one of their last games is against Galway as well. And Galway are starting to pick up form now and Shane Walsh coming back to the team. So if Kerry aren't careful, they could be dragged into a relegation battle too. Yeah, like and like I was impressed with Con Kilpatrick as well in round midfield for Tyrone. I thought he had a very, very good game. Got himself a point and got himself into some very good goal uh, positions. Peter Hart, I thought, was impressive as well. Um, and, and it's a hard one to judge with Tyrone because we've seen them produce these results before. Like they beat Kerry last year, let's not forget, in their own backyard as well, and then went on to, to have the championship season they had. So it's hard to know really what to judge from Tehran. Like it's a great result and it's a great win, but at the same time, you know, they, they need to build a consistent run of performances. And I think that will start with the result against, you know, against Monaghan next week. But like it is a hard one to judge. I think they, they played very, very well and it was a brilliant performance, but I think they need to build on this now as well. They do definitely and uh, look at the fixtures they Monaghan uh, way and then our at home. Like those two will be the asset tests uh, for Toronto, especially two of them are their relegation rivals as it turns out as well. So like those two will be the asset test for Toronto. They have to perform well in the those two games to you know have any chance. And let's not forget as well, the Ulster quarter final is Toronto against Monaghan. So there's two going to be two crucial games between the teams in the space of maybe four weeks. So, like, that's going to be big as well. And maybe there's an element we talk about on your channel uh, quite often of shadow boxing, maybe, between the two. Maybe you can't afford it because if you go down to Division 2, it is going to be a bear pit next season when you look at Division 2. Like, um, like it, look who's there, Donegal. There, there, there might not be something in there. But when you look at Cavan's farm in Division 3 at the moment, they might come up and get a bounce. Cork are performing well at the moment in Division 2. You look at uh, Kil Kildare, if they manage to stay up, surely there's something in there. So Division 2 is still going to be a bear pit next season. So to go down to there would be a disaster. So looking at Toronto's next two fixtures against Bill Ulster sides, it'll be good practice for the Ulster Championship. But, but as well as that, they're crucial games. And Toronto, by God, they have to win those two games to stay up and just to keep the momentum going. Because you mentioned last year, the game in Killarney, Toronto performed excellently. And then against Derry the next, the next few weeks, they bomb. So it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, Brian Dewar and Fergal Logan ground the players in many ways. But I think like they should have learned from their mistakes from last year. And I think they, they might start to gain a bit of form. But then again, you don't know what this Toronto team. Yeah, and I suppose from a Kerry perspective, as you alluded to there, like three defeats from their opening five matches. Um, and, and obviously, you know, all of those defeats have come away from home. And as he said, joint bottom of the of the league, um, obviously with four points at the minute. It, it's not looking too good for them at the moment in terms of Division 1. I mean, like I suppose from a Kerry perspective, like should there be some room for worry there or should there be some concern? Like I think fair enough you could look into it and say, well, they were missing a lot of their players for the open couple of weeks of the league. 
But today, like they had a lot of regular starters. You know, David Clifford played, Sean O'Shea played. Clifford, I think, scored one point from play. Sean O'Shea played very well. But apart from those two forwards, they don't really seem to get enough. Now, I know they had a few players uh, go off with injury and whatnot, and they had they, they made a few changes at half time. But generally speaking, from a carry perspective, it, like I don't know, like is it could this be a case of a hangover from the last year in a similar fashion to what Tyrone had last year? Or is it a case, do you think, that it is just the league and, you know, Kerry are, are looking further on down the line? I, I honestly think Kerry can't afford it really right now. When you think about it, like, it, like I don't want to toot my own heart about Cork now, but Munster is going to be stronger this year. And Kerry can't afford to, you know, lapse in concentration. And in terms of a hangover, you wouldn't have thought that with Kerry because they won the All-Ireland back in July. Um, it was a difference with Tyrone. They won it in September, and then they had to go again in January after a holiday. So they literally had to come straight back after the league. With Kerry, they would have had time to prepare for the league. David Clifford and Sean O'Shea were bedded in this season. So was Shane Ryan, let's not forget, early on in the league campaign. But um, as, as Noel said there, yeah, Kerry looked tired, leggy towards the end. Yeah, they, they did, and that's the big worry about Kerry, look, I, I know Gavin White and uh, Paul Gainey are coming back, and I think Stephen O'Brien's going to come back as well into the team. But still, I, I'd be very worried about Kerry. When you look at the next few games, okay, they're home to Ross Common, but Ross Common could still get a bounce. Like, you look at Ross Common over the last two games, losing them, they want to get back up with the horse. And then the last game, they're away to a Galway team who are improving now, and Shane Walsh is coming back in, Robert Finnerty is coming back in. So, Galway are going to get even stronger as well. So, by the looks of us, they have to beat Ross Common at home. If Kerry don't do that, I think they're in massive trouble. I like I, I just think I know they won the All Ireland last year, and a lot of people were praising them, and a lot of people, including myself, would have said at the start of the year they're going to go on and uh, win a second All Ireland in a row. But at this stage, they have to concentrate in the league. They have to stay up in Division One because if Kerry go down to Division Two, I know I know the people don't Kerry that would be disastrous for them. You know, to go down to Division Two, to go down to that level, and uh, yeah, they have to pick up form against Ross Common and uh, quickly. Yeah, like, and and I think as well, like when you look at the template that was set by by Kerry in the last couple of years, it was all about starting strong in the in the league, trying to get that silverware, win as many games as possible, and keep those standards and consistency consistency levels for the entirety of the league season. And it's strange, like this year, that that those consistency levels don't seem to be there now. It could be due to the fact that look, they, they you know they, they they got over the line last year, and um, so maybe they're having a, a bit of a different approach to, to things this year. Long club season for a lot of players, but I don't know, like that bite or or sort of tenacity about Kerry doesn't seem to be there at this early stage, in my opinion, anyways. And that, like, I don't know, like I, it could come back to bite them further down the line, in my opinion. It could do. Let me ask you a question, Aaron. Do you think it'll come back to bite them in the Munster Championship or later on down the year if this form keeps continuing? I, th- I think they'll be fine in Munster, realistically. Like I know, as you said, Cork have definitely shown, shown some signs of improvement. But I think when 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 push comes to shove, like in a, are you, you, you're going to play each other in a Munster semi final or a Munster final, according um, to the draw? Uh, the Munster semi final, Kerry are going to play either Tip or Waterford, and then the Munster final is most likely be against either Cork, Clare. Um, Limerick is in there as well, so yeah. Hmm. So that's yeah, fair. yeah. So I think I think by the time it gets to a monster final, I think I think Kerry will have got the the cobwebs out of their system, and I think they will have enough to to come through Cork, even if they're not at their brilliant best, in my opinion. Um, now there could be a couple of scares definitely thrown in there, especially with, with how Cork are performing at this time. But I think when it comes to the group stages, like let's not forget, there's going to be a lot more games this time around, and I'm. Um, you're looking at the depth of Kerry's squad. Like we always said that Kerry had a brilliant depth of their squad, and I think that they do, but I'm not sure that they have the same levels as Clifford, Sean O'Shea, Steve, you know, uh, Stephen O'Brien, Paul Ganey. Now I know you could say, well, if you take three, four forwards out of any side, you know, they're they're gonna struggle. But I don't know, like I would I would look at Kerry and I, I would think that they're still the favourites in my opinion, but they certainly have a lot more work to do to retain that all Ireland than I would have thought a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. Like a lot of people would have said they'd um, retain their all Ireland even like 
Like, take take you back for the last few weeks. I would have said that David Clifford, Sean O'Shea, and Shane Ryan coming into the team would boost this Kerry morale, and they'd be fine in staying up to Division One. But looking at them today, I was I was worried. Like even scoring one two in the second half, something small like that, like that's not good enough. It really, really isn't good enough to be. I know Toronto struggled in the last few weeks, but. We were saying like on loads of podcasts that Kerry should win this game. Look at Toronto's performances over the last few weeks. Credit to Toronto. Unbelievable credit. They did they did their best. They did absolutely brilliant. Like yeah, bring Matty Donnelly in today definitely gave them a new dimension. But for Kerry to lose that game to a team that had two points on the board before Tron, I mean, it doesn't really read well for Kerry. And who would have actually say that Kerry would be joint second bottom going in, going into the last two match weeks? You know, it's it's worrying. I, I'd be worried if I was a Kerry fan in going out to Division 2 because if Kerry go down to... It, it'd be like Dublin going to, to Division 2 last season. If Kerry go down, it'll be a disaster. Disaster down there. No matter what they do in Munster, like, it's going to be big if Kerry... I don't know when was the last time Kerry actually played Division 2. I'd love to know that, but I, I would imagine it was a very long time ago. But if I was a Kerry fan, I'd be worried about the farm. But considering Paul Gainey, Stephen O'Brien, Gavin White are coming back, maybe there's room for improvement there. But look, when you look at the forwards that Kerry have gone, gone out over the last few weeks, Donald O'Sullivan, Dar Roach, Paul O'Shea is another one in the U ranks there, Paul Walsh. Like they're good forwards, but as you said, they're already at the level of Clifford and O'Shea. In my honest opinion, they're not. I think they're, they're very good forwards, but they aren't the quality that you need to get over games, the likes of Clifford and O'Shea do. So it'd be interesting to see how Kerry um, dig themselves out of this uh, relegation scrap. Yeah, Rommel says here, a bit uh, hyperbole. Kerry will beat the Rossies as they do, as they are safe, and Galway will throw the Kerry game. They're already safe too, and are all in the championship. I, I disagree, though, to be honest, though, because I think that, I think Russ Common, although they've lost their last two games, like Roscommon started the league quite strong, and although they were beaten narrowly at today in the end by Mayo, like I think Mayo have proven themselves to be very, very strong and are in brilliant form, and you know are, are clearly at this moment in time on form the best side in the league. Um, I think when when the championship comes around, I would still fully expect Kerry to be the favourites and and compete for for the All Ireland Championship, in my opinion. But like even Gal- Galway in the last day, like Galway would would probably look at it and think, what an opportunity to relegate Kerry if they're in that scenario. Now I do think Kerry will be okay. I think they they probably will beat Ross Common next week at home, and then I think the Galway game could possibly be irrelevant. Um, but you are looking at Division One, like, and we'll get the league table up in a couple of minutes. There's a lot of teams on four points, three points, five points. Like it's it's possible that a team could get relegated with six points, you know. So that, that's why I do think Kerry needs to be careful. Yeah, and it's actually interesting because um, I kind of disagreed with that. Comment. Like uh, I was saying that uh, Ross Common would be fine on the J-Mac podcast during the week. Uh, check it out. Check out John's podcast if you haven't already. But me and Aaron are putting this on there. But like, I made the point that Ross Common would be safe because they have six points on the board. And I, I, I genuinely thought they were safe even before the Mayo game. But Kevin McGorty actually stopped me and said, I disagree with you. I think a team will be relegated on six points. After last night's Tony Gall performance, I was thinking... No, I, I don't think it'll end up that way. Donegal looked pretty off at now last night. But looking at Toronto today, I think mm. a team could genuinely go down six points. And we'll get on to Ross Common, I'm sure, in the minute. But I'd be worried about them as well. Like that game, in, in, where was it? I think it's Tralee or Kalar, one of the two anyway, in Kerry. That's huge. Whoever loses that is in big danger of going down. And make no mistake about it. I know Kerry might, might think they're better than Ross Common historically, and they'll get over Ross Common in the past. But this Ross Common team had the likes of Ben O'Carroll, Connor Cox scored a goal today, so he's back in form. Dermot Murta, Kieran Murta, they definitely they definitely have the talent. Do they have the bottle to, you know, to beat Kerry with Davy Burke in charge? I certainly think they do. Look, like, on a good day for Ross Common and an off day for Kerry, like one of them days. It could make the huge difference. And I think Ross Common would be definitely up for that Kerry game. So I don't think it's a foregone conclusion as Kerry fans may think that game. That's going to be absolutely crucial. Yeah, Dylan says here they might be trying to do what Dublin did in the six in a row. They're trying to 
do something different, not go all out in the league, but put it all into Munster and the and the championship. And uh, Patrick says no one to play in Munster. It's the bigger teams in the championship. Kerry need to worry about. Dylan also says 2002 was our last time uh, in Division Two, um, so definitely a uh, you know 21 years ago. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a lot to, to work on from a Kerry point of view. But I think we all know they have the talent there. Um, and, and they certainly are still, in my opinion, the, the favourites for 40 all them. But I do think there is there, there should still be a little bit of concern. Like, this is three defeats now in five games. Um, and you, you can't ignore that Kerry have looked quite flat a lot of the time. Even in their win versus Armagh as well. I didn't think they were, they were particularly brilliant that day either. Their shooting was very, very poor. Um, and, and in many ways, they got out of jail in, in that win. But... Um, but moving on anyway, it was Roscommon 211, Mayo 116. Mayo recorded another win. They sit top of, uh, of the league quite comfortably now at this stage. Back to back defeats for, for Roscommon in their last two. And I suppose Kevin McStay gets a win on his own, his old stomping ground. And I suppose the Mayo good vibes continues for another week. Yeah, and Ross Common were threatening to come back into that game. I was hearing, you know, you actually um, didn't watch the game, but I was hearing Ross Common were definitely threatening to come back into the game, and they didn't in the end. Mayo it got over the line, and we were talking about Mayo, the organised chaos in the last few weeks, especially in the Armagh game in match day two when they let the lead slip. They didn't let the lead slip today, so that's an improvement from a Mayo point of view, and there definitely is signs that this Mayo team is on the cusp of something. Like even James Carr, we've talked about him over the last few weeks. He scored three points from play today. That takes his total of three points from play. He's been very, very good. Killian O'Connor mm-hmm. uh, taking over the mantle of Ryan O'Donoghue who today did absolutely brilliant. Tommy Conroy coming back into the team and scoring a point as well. So Mayo definitely have more to add into that team and they look very good. Even um, uh, Rory Byrne coming into goal in place, a column repeated, absolutely brilliant as well. So pretty good for Mayo and I think they're definitely eyeing a place in the Division 1 final. A little chance to get silverware on the board for Kevin Backstay. Who would have thought that? At the start of the season. As for Ross Common, Kevin Kevin McGorty mentioned on the, the JMA podcast during the week, they still could be in danger. And look at this weekend's results. I know Ross Common have won the first three games, well done to them. But after the two losses, I think they are in danger now. They have to go down and put a, a performance against Kerry. They do have Dunning all the last game, so maybe there's a chance there to get to eight points, and that should keep them safe. But just to be more safe than sorry, they have to throw everything at this uh, Kerry game because I think Donegal are a bit of a busted flush so I think Ross Collins should beat them quite comprehensively anyway but um, yeah it's going to be an interesting few weeks for Ross Common in their quest to stay in um, Division 2 and who would have thought that um, maybe two weeks ago yeah it's just got to show like Division 1 has been very very unpredictable and um, you, you look at nearly every team other than Mayo, you know, um, like like it's mad to think Russ Common are second in the league with two games to go, but yeah, relegation could still be could still be possible. Um, like it has been kind of a, a crazy uh, division. But as you said there, like I thought Mayo did look very very comfortable for for large parts of the game. Like they they dominated early on, as you said, James Carr with three points, Killian O'Connor with seven. Um, you know, they didn't obviously, you know, Ryan O'Donoghue came on late on and in the final 15 minutes. Um, and I, and I, it shows Mayo's, you know, depth in their squad with the fact that they were missing Ryan O'Donoghue for, for large parts and they were still able to do as well as they are. And you, you could argue the case that Mayo have one of the, you know, in terms of depth of their squad, they're one of the best in the country, I think. They definitely do. And they've definitely showed a throughout the league campaign. And even look at the number of scores throughout the five games in the National League, you get 17 different scores in Division 1. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good tally in fairness to them. Like you look at all of them chipping in over the last few weeks. Even even the Tyrone game was the prime example last week. I think they I, I memories if memory serves correctly, I think they had eight or nine different scores in that game. And that was absolutely incredible. Statistics from them. Dermot O'Connor's doing well in midfield. Aiden O'Shea again had a pretty decent performance. Jack Carney getting a goal today, adding to his tally. He's got one three now in the league. Um, Killian O'Connor taking up the mantle. Like, that's three players now for Mayo o- over 10 points as well, in Killian O'Connor, Ryan O'Donoghue, and of course James Carr, who we mentioned previously. So, like, Mayo are definitely motoring along nicely. And we said it over the last few weeks is this the time for Mayo? A lot of Mayo fans would want us to talk up Mayo for obvious reasons and all Ireland's, but look at this team on current form. 
I believe this Mayo team are definitely primed for an All-Ireland. Like, they have the manager in Kevin McStay, they have the backroom team in Liam McCain, and of course Stephen Rochford there as well. And of course they have the players. Tommy Conroy coming back into the team. Aidan O'Shea is bound his position. Jordan Flynn is brilliant at wing forward. Matty Ryan and Dermot O'Connor is forming a formidable partnership in the middle of the field. Conor Loftus is doing well at centre back. They have goalkeepers coming in like Colm Reap in the, the four games previously and no Rory Burns today. And that's not talking about Rob Henley coming in. So that's three top goalkeepers in the Hessian there. Like David McBride, Jack Coyne. Like the, the list is endless. And I, I argue, is this, can we admit now that Mayo have a better squad than Kerry? I, I, I think it's it's a it's a thought. It is it is a thought when you think about it. Like Kerry's so called um, players to go up to Clifford and O'Shea and all them haven't performed so far. And when you look at Mayo's, they've been utterly flawless this season. So there is an argument there, maybe a bit early, but it's a question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think from one to fifteen, I I still think Kerry are are stronger. Like when Kerry of their best start 15 available to them when they've Stephen O'Brien back, when they've Paul Ganey back. Um, and I think when it comes to championship summer, I, I think Kerry do have a better 1-15. to 15. I mean, As you said, like you could argue the case that Mayo's overall squad and, and options to them is better. Like the players that they have available to them to bring off the bench and Kevin McLaughlin, Killian O'Connor if he doesn't start. Like even just looking at it on score BO today, like some of the players who came off or who, who came on, Connor, uh, Connor, uh, Connor McStay, Ryan O'Donoghue, Aidan O'Shea, Jason Doherty, Bob Toohey. Like, that's five very, very good players to bring off the bench. Um, like, Kevin McLaughlin, unused substitute. Podrick O'Hara, unused substitute. Aidan Orm as well. Like, they have a lot of very, very good options, Mayo. And, I, I like, I, I know, as you said, like, for Mayo fans, it, it like, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourselves just yet. But I think at the same time, like, you, you, you would be looking at it as a Mayo fan and thinking Dublin... A lot, you know, they, they've a lot of work to do. Kerry, fair enough, they'll probably come strong by the time the league comes around. Derry are looking very good, but there's a few teams where there's question marks over. And if Mayo can bring this form into the championship, like they'll be a very, very hard team to stop. And I, I do genuinely believe they, they could do it this year. I don't want to sound too reactionary, but I, I do actually think they have a, a strong chance. They definitely do. And even look at the players coming, the late changes coming into the I'm looking at the score bio, bio app as well. For a good app, um, if you haven't downloaded already, um, Paddy Dorkin coming into the team, he's a top class player, you know. And Stephen Cohen, a wing back, Sam Cannon is a good young player, Joe McDonough still chipping in as well. Jack Carney, like um, James Carr, obviously, as we mentioned, uh, John Flynn, Colin Reed didn't start, like Padraig O'Hoare as well. And let's not forget, we were saying at the start of the league, how will Mayo cope without Lee Keegan and Oshin Muller, who were missing? They've coped unbelievably well, in fairness to them. And I would have thought at the start of the league campaign, it would have taken about maybe a year or two for Kent McStay to stamp his authority on the team. But yeah. looking at it right now, it looks instant. And fair play to him. And he works magic. Like, I looked at that um, AIB documentary uh, where Kevin McStay and uh, Liam McHale as coach were involved with Ross Common. And I looked at that, looked at that in detail. And I said to every Mayo fan, I believe Ken McStay could be probably your best chance of winning an All-Ireland. Look at that documentary alone. Because he he drives something out of these players. I don't know what it is. Like, like you know, even with Ross Common in um, 2017, the speeches he gave at halftime, if you watched already, like it is unbelievable. You know, and I, I actually back Mayo to do very, very well in the All-Ireland this year. I think Connacht would be very, very tough. Ross Common are still a tough team. We'll get on to them in the minute now. Galway, very good team with, with Shane Walsh and Rob Finnerty coming back in and Damian Comer coming back from injury. It's going to be a tough road. But in terms of the order of the group stage, there's more time to improve. There's going to be three group stage games. And let's not forget, tour place isn't necessarily out either in the group stage. So like if he, even if Mayo mess up in that, they can still pick themselves back up again and get to an order in the quarter final. So I mean... Mm. I mean, it's not inconceivable that I know we're sounding a bit reactionary at the moment and Mayo fans will tell us to show up in the comments. But I'm, I'm, I think Mayo will have a very, very good year this year. Like, 
with other teams, like with um, Cork, for example, with um, Kerry, with Dublin, with Tyrone, it's all different thoughts week by week, week by week, week by week. Like when you look at uh, Cork, for example, one week against Mead, we're terrible. One week against Clare, we're back up on top. With Mayo, it's every single week at this stage, this season anyway, we're praising them. And the consistency is unbelievable in fairness to Mayo. So I'd actually back them to have a very, very good season. Yeah, like I think when it gets to all Ireland quarterfinals, semi-finals, that's really when Mayo need to need to show what they're made of. Like in Crow Park against tough opposition. Not that you know they're obviously playing tough opposition at the moment, but I think that's when it really, really will matter. And Mayo fans will tell you if they do happen to get beaten a quarterfinal or a semi-final, you know these kind of results in the league won't matter because you think back to 2019 when they won the league, but then obviously got beat by by Dublin in the in the all Ireland quarterfinals. So it, it was one of them things that. The league is great, but obviously they're looking at the the big picture. But I think at the same time, it's worth mentioning as well. It is Kevin McStay's first season, and I don't think like there's no real pressure on Mayo to actually go and win the All Ireland this year. It is a building project, and that's why I think it does look very positive for them at the minute. It does so, yeah. And um, I suppose like um, one one negative note that I look at my notes here about the the, the game today, especially uh, about Mayo, like. After 48 minutes, was Mayo won 12, Ross Common seven points. Ross Common then scored two goals to get them back into the game. Maybe there's still an element of what we are, what we said in the last few weeks, organised chaos with Mayo, and that probably needs to be fixed in order for them to, to progress and do well in the other quarter final and semi final. But you get them so far this year, I think they've been absolutely outstanding, and I, I definitely back them. I know. A lot of people are saying all over the quarterfinals, all over the semifinals, all over the final. That's where you need to prove it. But looking at the team, even the teams similar to Mayo this season, you mentioned already Dublin look poor, Kerry look well out of it this season. Throne, one week they're good, next they're pretty terrible. Donegal, way off it. Armagh, I looked at them last night, I didn't think much of them. Um, you look at Wells there, Galway. Like Galway, I think. Are probably the next best at the moment to Mayo. If you're if you're making your power rankings at the moment in terms of right now and current form, I would say Mayo number one, Galway number two. I, I don't know what people would say in the comments about that, but maybe Derry number would be up there as well, considering their second half performance last night. But look, it's going to be an interesting all Ireland. I don't think there's a runaway winner this season, so yeah, it's going to be a very it's medium and rock for the drill. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, Ronald, yeah. Um, like Mayo look very good this season. The backroom team looks um, looks to be taking shape, and yeah, Mayo look very good this season. I think themselves, Galway and Derry have probably been the most three impressive teams so far. Absolutely, absolutely. Moving on, then it was Galway one thirteen, Monaghan ten points. Galway much much needed win for them as well. I mean, Galway have been a hard team to judge at times in the league. Like one thing that has stood out from a a Galway perspective, like they haven't conceded much at all, like in the league. I think defensively they've been very, very strong. Um, and again, like they're just sort of grinding their ways to victory. Like I think you look at Galway and you think they they do they clearly are looking ahead, I think, to the, the championship and to Connacht because it's going to be very, very competitive. But they're they're just finding ways to get over the line, they're finding ways to get wins, and this was no different. Exactly, and um, yeah, to ram home your point about uh, defensively, they've only conceded two goals in this Allianz League campaign. I think one of them was to Mayo, who've been impressive in this um, this season. So yeah, Galway have been absolutely brilliant, and it shows their bounce back ability. Let's not forget they were a man down; they were down to fourteen men at half time, and they were losing eight seven in this game, and they still came back to win us and fair play to them. Like Monaghan have been a tough uh, assignment for any team over the last few weeks and it just shows Galway's resilience to get back into the game and it was, it was great to see Shane Walsh um, back at us today just on a side note I thought um, it was brilliant after um, him spending a few weeks on holiday and yeah Galway looked to be taking shape now Damien Comer is going to come back you'd imagine in the next few weeks Rob Finnerty I think started today um, Paul Kelly there Johnny Heaney getting a crucial goal in the last few minutes as well and yeah like um, Galway they found that bounce back ability today and they, they executed pretty pretty well. And so, yeah, very good result for Galway. Even Paul Connery should be in with three points. Matthew Tierney could see continuing his unbelievable form with three points in the league. 
um, today as well. Uh, even Tom Paul Hans um, going to come back from injury as well. So Galway still have numbers to come back, and they're a team they're tipping along nicely. When you look at the last, look at the first three weeks or two weeks or so of the league, we would have said the Galway would have been in a relegation battle. But when you look at the last two games or the last few weeks, they've definitely bounced back brilliantly. And who's to say they, it'll be a Connacht same um, uh, fair in Crow Park? Yeah, it certainly is looking that way. Like especially when you look at Russ Common still up there with six points as well. Um, obviously Russ Common have you know two very difficult games to, to finish up. Obviously playing Kerry next week, but it, it very well could could be that case. And we'll get the league table up in uh, in in just a moment. Uh, Farney Fan TV says Monaghan versus Tyrone in Clonus is a crucial game as whoever loses goes down due to head to head and permutations. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting po- point, and especially with. You know, you think Kerry and Russ Common playing each other. Like if Kerry win, you know, if Kerry are to beat Russ Common, that puts them, you know, in, in a in a brilliant position. Obviously, they have the head to head record over Monaghan at the minute as well because they beat them. So, you know, it's likely whoever loses that next week could go down. You could take it, play David, that advocate for a moment for a Kerry point of view. If Kerry lose to Russ Common and Monaghan beat Tyrone and Clonus, Kerry suddenly will be in seventh place. And they've so, lost their own as well, yeah. So they lost their own, yeah. So it's going to be an interesting uh, week of uh, action, definitely. Um, yeah, it, it, it definitely is. And when you think about this, like six points is is not going to save you. When you think about look, like, Tyrone's last game is against Armagh. Um, they could sit, look Armagh on five points. They could still get dragged into it as well. So look, you look at the table at the moment, Ross Common. I think. Galway should be pretty much safe when you look at the next few games. I think they'll beat Kerry at home. I think with the players coming back, Damien Comer, etc. I think they should have enough at this stage to beat Kerry. So I think from Ross Common down to Monaghan, one of them is going to go down. I think Ross Common, Armagh, Kerry, Tyrone, Monaghan, one of them is going to join Donegal and go down to Division 2. So the, the next week of Allianz League action, it's two weeks again. So so I, I think Tyrone still have more to improve. Um, then, so that's a dangerous assignment for Monaghan, definitely. So it's going to be a big, big, um, massive week for them counties because, you know, no no game now. You have to improve, you know, at the training ground over the next few weeks. So it's going to be a big, big um, week of rest by for those sides. So, yeah, it's going to be a massive few weeks. In regards to whoever loses goes down instantly for Tyrone Monaghan, I don't look at the maths right now. I think that's incorrect, but we'll see over the next few weeks. Like, for example, I'm not sure who our map or our map against Galway. If Galway win that, um, our map will be on five points, and the loser of Toronto Monaghan will be on four. So there's still hope. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think our map look at last night's performance. I think they're still relatively in the dark fight as well. So. Yeah, it's going to be, and you're bringing up the game now, so um, good timing. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting relegation battle. Absolutely, yeah. Like I watched this game last night as well, and as you were saying, it was a fairly uneventful game. It was, there was, you know, it was a real sort of league feeling to it. It was, it didn't really seem like the the game mattered too much to either team. Uh, to be honest, I thought shooting was quite poor on both teams. Uh, I think Armagh won it due to the fact that they just had a little bit more quality. In their team and and especially with Donegal's injuries, but look in the end, it's a, a win's a win and it's a huge win for Armagh because it does give them a good bit of breathing space, um, and it means you know they they play Tyrone on the final day as well in the league. Let's not forget as well, you know I think away from home, so you know they're giving themselves just a bit of breathing space in case something comes to it on that final day of the league. Exactly. So, but the performance last night, I know, I repeat myself like a broken record, uh, saying this over the last few minutes, but looking at Armagh's performance last night, I'd be worried for them. I, I, I said at the start of the league that Armagh are a very good side and look at them against Galway last year in the all quarter quarterfinal, I thought they were outstanding. But looking at them last night, there seemed to be something off about them. I, I don't know what it was. Like They, they scored five points from play last night. Donegal scored five points from play. So it just that stat just tells you what a dull game it was, to be honest with you. Like Donegal's top score was the goalkeeper. Like you know, it's 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 it just tells you 
how much of um, a bore fist that game was. It, was. it wasn't really great. It wasn't great quality. I, I know our man wouldn't give a jot about the performance. It's two points on the board. So they'll get over the line. But if they produce that performance against Galway in the next game or against Toronto in match day seven, they lose. So it's as simple as that because Donegal, to me, Donegal are a Division 2 team already. They're not good enough for Division 1. So, like, I, I just think, yeah, um, I'd be worried if I was an Armand fan looking at that performance. Kieran Donahue said the same thing as yourself there over the last few minutes, Aaron. It does give a bit of free, breathing space to them. But look at Tyrone's result today. It definitely puts them back in danger. So, Armand will need to pluck up and perform better or else. Dean could be staring down the barrel of a relegation. Yeah, I, I don't know though. Like, I, I think Armagh just, they, you know, the Ulster Championship is going to be so fierce and tense. And they obviously, you know, they've they've gone very strong in the league in the past. And I think it's come back to bite them a little bit in the Ulster Championship because there's a, you know, usually there's a bit of a break between the league and, and the Ulster Championship. And I think they, they come out of usually quite a very intense league. Um, and I suppose, as Patrick says here, like, they do have some injuries as well. Um, you know, at, at the minute, like, I think Ushie and O'Neill is still out few other players sort of coming in, in and out of side. Um, you know, so they, so they are missing a few. Um and, and I suppose at the same time, like at least they're still like it is the hallmark of a good side that they're not particularly playing brilliant, but they're finding ways to, to grind out victories. Like let's not forget as well that against Kerry, like I think they were like I thought they played well like they were they were set up very defensively, but I thought you know they, they did well like efficiency wise they were good in, in, in attack. Um, and they're doing enough to get victories. But the caveat to that, Aaron, was it was Donegal last night. Donegal, a team that I think are on well on the way down. So I, I, I just, I know our fans will say a win's a win and stuff like that, but even look at their scoring charts, the only player to give well over 10 points is Rain O'Neill. They're hugely reliant on him to get scores. Now, I'd be really worried. I think there's... It's, Hopefully, revenge against Galway. Look, it, there is the revenge element there, but Galway have just proved over the last few weeks they, they're looking good. Shane Walsh is coming back into the team. Rob Finnerty's coming back in. Look, look, Johnny Heaney's starting to find his form, find his feet. Matthew Tierney's still on form. Paul Conroy is still on form. Like Galway are still a very good team, so it's going to be difficult for our man if they, if they, I'm just saying if. It depends what I'm at. Or look, when you look at the last few games, actually, for Armagh before the game last night, Monaghan, they squeaked over the line. Um, Mayo, look, really with Mayo, really, um, Mayo's downfall that uh, got Armagh back into the game. They were very poor against Ross Common, I thought. Against Kerry, they decided to play this defensive system, but it didn't really work to an extent. So, and you look at Kerry today, look at the way it's her own, dismantled Kerry today. So I don't know. I, I've been I've been I've been praising our for the last few weeks, but last night I just thought there was something off about them. When well, you might not think so, Aaron, but I just thought there was something really, really wrong about them. And they, yeah, on a side note about Johnny Gall, I think they're gone. I, I I think they're gone now, Aaron. I think it's time they're gone. Three points. They're playing Mayo next. Yeah, I I think yeah, it's um Goodbye to Donegal, first time in Division 2 since uh, 2019. So, And again, I said it a few weeks ago, and I believe this point as well, even though I think they'll stay in Division 2 for quite a while. Yeah, like I, th- I think it does It does look pretty tough for them at the minute. Uh, Carnwood says Armagh is missing seven starters from the Galway game. Bit harsh there, uh, to be honest. And uh, Patrick says Galway are coming to the athletic grounds. The Armagh fans push the team onto games yeah like i think i think for our man like they, they have looked a little flat but I, I do honestly think that they they are looking quite ahead and i think the most important thing for them is just to get results to not get too many more injuries um and i think the way they're playing the way they're playing is in some ways is just to get through these games stay in division one and then focus on the uh on the ulster championship uh Rommel also says, you know how inexperienced our Armagh fans are, are at this level when they are citing league game against Galway as a, as a revenge mission. So there you go, a bit of a uh, bit of dirt thrown at the uh, at the Armagh fans. There, uh, we'll get the league table up. So this is how it looks: Mayo and Roscommon sitting in the top two there at the minute. Mayo with eight points, Galway and Armagh are next in line in third and fourth. 
Kerry, Tyrone and Monaghan all with four points and Donegal sitting bottom with three points. I suppose looking at it there, who do you think will go down? Donegal, definitely. And oh, it's going to be so tough, Aaron. Really, really tough. Like, you know, you last few fixtures. I think Monaghan will be Tyrone. So they'll be on six points. Kerry, I think, should have enough for Ross Common. But he got will beat Armagh. So then it's Armagh against Tyrone. Yeah, that Armagh Tyrone game, whoever loses that, I think is gone. I honestly think so. Like, look, who's at home in that game? I'm going to check. I, I have it here, actually. I think, um, I think Tyrone are home, yeah. Tyrone are home. I'm gonna go for I'm gonna say Armagh are gonna join Donegal. Get rid of it. Because of that uh, throwing game in Healy Park. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I think Armagh and Donegal are gonna go down. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I think I think at this moment in time I'd go Donegal and Tyrone. Still think there's a, a good like I agree as well. I'd, I'd fancy Monaghan to beat them in two weeks, especially in Clonus. Um Final game in the league, a home for Toronto. It's a very, very hard one, to be honest. And it could even be a draw. And, you know, like you'd look at it and there, there's going to be plenty more trills and spills and, and everything else. You certainly wouldn't even rule out Russ Common potentially getting dragged into it somehow as well. But um, but that is that. Moving on to Division 2, we had uh, Derry 111, Dublin 13 points. Dublin suffered their first defeat of the league in 2023. Uh, Dublin leading by five points at half time, looking good, looking comfortable. I was doing a watch along of the game and obviously did a reaction after the game as well. Things were looking rosy in the garden and then things came crashing back down to reality very, very fast. And uh, I suppose I tweeted out saying that game showed everything that's great about Dublin, that they clearly still have the talent levels and the ability. But then in the second half, when the going got tough, we folded. And I don't. I think Derry were, were good. But I don't even think they were brilliant. I think shooting wise, they, they left it behind them. And I think they would even look at this game and think they could have played better. So yeah, from a Dublin perspective, not good enough. I just I, I just imagine like if Kieran Kilkenny took that goal chance, we'd be sitting here and talking about Dublin's redemption arc. You know? So like it does swing around the roundabouts. Like it looked the right decision at the time for Kieran Kilkenny, but looking in hindsight. Maybe he should have passed it off. Maybe, you know, um, it's a it was a huge opportunity missed, and uh, yeah, Derry, they did perform. They definitely brought the the decibels up a notch in the second half. They definitely did, and it definitely translated onto the pitch. But when you look at the score on the halftime, especially seven points to two, you would have thought Dublin have this in the bag. And they, what happened in the second half? I don't know. It wasn't necessarily, I don't think, a complete capitulation. Like, yeah. a capitulation was Dublin against Mayo. I don't think this was a capitulation, in all honesty. Like, this, I forget, Derry only took the lead for the first time. What was it, the 65th minute? 60, maybe yeah. even late from that. So, like, I don't think it was that quite bad as uh, people make it out to be. But, yeah, it was, um, it, like, the first half, I thought Dublin, Rex and Brian Fenton was dominating proceedings in the middle. Conor Callaghan wasn't in the game particularly, but he still scored a point. Carmel Costello did pretty well up front. Um, they had the defensive structure pretty well organised as well. Like Derry were poor shooting, but Dublin still had their defensive organ- organisation in um, the first half pretty top-notch. But I think the main turning point was the goal for Derry. And again, we talked about this for Dublin and Cork a few weeks ago. It was so easy for them to go through that defence, you know, for Cork to go through the Dublin defence. And it seemed that way Last night for Noel Thorne was good. It was a brilliant, it was in brilliantly worked for Derry, but I'd be questioning the Dublin defence there. Like you less so much space there, and yeah, he ended up in the back of the net. And even look at um the stats now. It's now scores from play actually. Dublin could see he scored twelve points from play out of the possible thirteen, so there was still something there. And look, actually an interesting stat actually. Derry only conceded five frees all night. I don't know was the referee. On Dub- on Derry side last night, maybe you look at those stats, but yeah. maybe there's an argument there that Derry were more controlled than the tackle and epitomised by Mike Fitzsimon sending off near the end of the game as well. Um, for the second yellow, he could have got sent off earlier. So yeah, there's that element of the game too. So 
look at the stats even, scores from play, being ahead at half time. Dublin should have this wrapped. I leave it to Kieran Kilkenny goal chance. The Dublin will be cursing their luck coming out of that game. Yeah, Oren says here, Garrett McKinless coming in was the turning point in the match for Derry. His intensity is essential for, for Derry's success. And yeah, like it probably wasn't really until that Noel Toner goal that the momentum really shifted. I, I always felt like Dublin were quite comfortable up until that moment. And yeah, like I think like from looking on, like I'll have to rewatch the game, but it just felt like Dublin looked very leggy as well and very tired. And we just sort of, Derry just in terms of strength and condition and just looked that bit further ahead. Um, John says here, to be honest, Dublin blew the game versus Derry. Looking at the level Dublin are at, they'd struggle in Division 1. I think so as well. Like I think if Dublin were in Division 1 this year, I think it would probably be almost exact same as what we've seen last year. Um, and you could actually argue the case that the levels have even dropped even further when you look at some of the teams we've been playing and Clare and uh, everything else that we've struggled to beat. Like You look at Cork, who comfortably dispatched Clare today, whereas Dublin struggled. you know, And, and that's kind of the the levels are at really um from speaking to a few dublin fans i know who were at the game there seems to be a general consensus maybe that it is now the time for change in management and maybe desi farrell's race has been ran like i said multiple times i think he's a dublin legend for what he's achieved as a player as a manager but you do look at it from last year 2021 and this year you know come the end of the year i, I do think maybe a change is in order because i don't really think it's in terms of Dublin competing for all Ireland's, we seem to be a mile off. And, and realistically, a county like us, considering what we achieved a couple of years ago, we should be at least competing. And it does feel like we're a good bit off that this year. It does, yeah. And I, I just wonder, does pa, did Pat Ken, did Roy coming into the back row team, like, you know, um, you know, press panic stations a small bit? Like, we talked about Dublin's defensive systems over the last few weeks and even the match against Clare last week where they had 15 men behind the ball. And Pat Kilroy was synonymous for that in um, the early 2010s, you know, these defensive um, tactics. And I wonder, does that unsettle the Dublin players a small bit? Looking at them on the pitch? I, I don't know what what was wrong there. Um, but look at the first half. It was just polar opposites. The first half, Dublin were so flawless. They were brilliant. Like when you look at Brian Fenton in the middle of the field, Karma Costello was kicking the lights out, they had good shooting accuracy, they were brilliant. And the old Dublin was nearly back, but it just seemed to be a few short tweets from Derry. The decibel of the crowd went up, the goal went in, and suddenly Dublin folded. I, I, I don't know what it was really, but about the Kieran Kilkenny chance, uh, Aaron, do you think he made the right choice at the time? Or do you think looking at back at it, he should have gone for goal? No, no. And I think Rommel is a good commentator. He says Dublin seem very cautious, which is baffling given the quality they have in their start team. Too much handball, nowhere near direct enough compared to the 2015 2020 juggernaut. And it was even something I said in the match reaction like that killer instinct from Dublin seems to be gone. There was another instance as well, and I'm not too sure who it was running through. It might have been Lee Gannon who had a chance, and he, he just popped it over the bar. And you can understand that sometimes to a certain extent, but I've always said, like, if you have a clear one-on-one -on -one chance as a goal, you should go for the goal. You know what I mean? Like, just go for it. Unless you're, you know, you're, it's one of those very cagey games, like you see in Ulster sometimes, where it's 10 points to nine, and you're in that scenario where you can't really risk it. But I just think you should go for it. You know, I, th I think it's, you know, there's a, enough space there in the net, in my opinion, to, to at least go for it, at least try create something of it. It puts pressure on the opposition and gives the goalkeeper something to do as well. And as you said, yeah, like Kilkenny running through, Costello's there over on his left hand side. You know, and you've seen Costello even as well. Like he, he looks so furious afterwards. And yeah, I don't know what it is. It's it's a strange, it's a strange thing because well, you think back to a couple of years ago, we didn't we never did that at all. We were always very you know, you think of the all Ireland final versus Mayo in twenty twenty you know, in the open couple of seconds where we scored a, a goal, what would have been very similar to something that Kilkenny would have done to Costello. So you're looking at it and thinking, yeah, has that killer instinct been coached out of Dublin? That's the way it looks to me. And I think they've only scored two goals in the Alliance League campaign as well, which definitely epitomises the point. Double checking now, I think they've scored two goals, three goals in the league campaign. Like that's not, And two of them was Brian Fenton. Yeah. To be honest, like Brian Fenton seems to be 
the only guy with a bit of killer instinct in that team. And he, yeah. the, he's actually Brian Fintan's your your only goal scorer from play in the whole league this season. Yeah. That probably just shows the point. Is I don't know the killer like I I go back to Dublin with the days of um Border Brogan, for example, even back to 2010 with uh, the game against uh, Cork in the first few minutes. Border Brogan gets the first chance back in the net. I, I remember a game against Fermanagh specifically as well. First chance for Brogan back in the net. There doesn't seem to be that same killer instinct with Dublin at the moment. Like the Kim Kenny chance, to be honest, it kind of look at it from a neutral point of view with Orksia. Yeah. And I can and I'd imagine it work even more from a Dublin fan fan's point of view. Because you're thinking, go for the net. Kill the game off. Like it's you know, it's it's ridiculous the way like you look at Derry last night. They were always going for the goal. Like Derry could have got a goal in the first few minutes, actually. Brilliant save by David O'Hanlon in the game. Like, yeah. you know that, that's the point that we're saying about Dublin if they, if they carry on this trend against the likes of Mayo who are performing excellent at the moment against Galway against Monaghan even who are looking pretty good Dublin would stroke it because they just don't have a killer instinct in front of goal I, I don't know what it is about Dublin like other than Fenton like it, it seems to be non-existent I don't know what it is like it's not just goals or anything they didn't even have goal they had goal chances, but they pop up over the bar like Kilkenny last night, Lee Gannon. I think there was another one. I think there was one in the first few minutes. James McCarthy had a chance. Like James McCarthy in the past would have rocked his land to the back of the net. But mm. it seemed to be a team shot. But it was well defended by the Derry player in the end. But like, you would have expected more from James McCarthy in that position as well. So that's a worrying aspect for Dublin. Look at statistically and look at it just out of your two eyes as well. It's baffling in many ways. Yeah, like, and I seen even Conor McKenna tweeted earlier as well, saying Dublin have lost seven games since the start of twenty twenty two. Like, and, and that really puts it into into perspective. Like, um, when when you really look at it, like, and when you actually look at it since the All Ireland win in twenty twenty, I thought we looked all right in that sort of COVID league, that COVID mini league. I thought we looked well enough there, but since the championship in twenty twenty one, like, I'm like aside from the Leinster championship last year. I think we've looked fairly, you know, poor for the for the majority of the league, and that's why it's it has been it has been quite baffling. Um, a few comments coming in here. John says Dublin need a new face at the helm. Hard to hard thing to say as he is a legend for Dublin. And Tom says things aren't going to go good for Desi, all right, but the players aren't helping much matters either. And uh, Oren says Derry's bench was massive in the past. That was Dublin's biggest strength. And uh, John says there was a lack of cohesiveness and indecision by Dublin players. Defence half-back line have been dodgy in games so far. And yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, with uh, you know, w- with Dublin, like you, you actually look at it as well, and um, you think of how how we've been setting up defensively, but yet we've conceded five goals um, in our last four games, and that's that's very worrying. You know, we're conceding. We conceded two against Cork, one against Clare, one against Limerick. And one against Derry, um, and probably should have conceded one against Kildare as well. I thought we got out of jail with that with that chance to hit the post. So, yeah, you know, it's it just it's not looking too good as a as a Dublin fan at the minute. Things could turn around by the time the championship comes around, but I do worry for us in that group stage type thing. Yeah, you definitely worry about them. But um, even look at um. Dublin since the 2021 championship you're saying like generally I thought the second half against Kerry was probably and the Leinster championship obviously was the only times yeah. where Dublin proved something I, I don't know looking back at that Kerry game like I said to John during the week as well Dublin can't put up that kind of level of performance in the second half against a Kerry team that was so dominant last season and not do well in Division 2 this season it just doesn't make sense yeah and that's the thing yeah and that's the thing, like you can see the talent levels are there. Like even in the first half versus Derry, you've seen that the talent levels and the players are there, but it just seems to be I think I think the coaching is the problem, in my opinion, you know. Pat Gilroy, possibly. Yeah, I, I don't even I don't even know. I don't even know about that. Like I, I think we just look a bit confused. Like we we seem to set up defensively, but not really defend. Do you know what I mean? Like we, we leave gaps, we leave spaces. Um, and then attacking wise, indecision, you know, poor, 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 poor decision making. So, yeah, it's a, it's a hard one to know, to be honest. 
It is now, yeah. And even like when you think about Pat Kilroy came in to set up a defensive system, but you can see the five goals in five games. One of them against Limerick, the worst team in the division. Who are let's let's be honest, Limerick are near enough to a division three team. You know, so yeah, it doesn't look good for Dublin. And yeah, like you'd have to imagine Dublin will do well in Leinster in, in the next few weeks because I don't think the talent in Leinster is that good. When you look at Mead over the last few weeks, Kildare are plummeting loud are probably your next challengers. But if Dublin like no like loud, I know are performing well. And Darby Connell and Sam Wright are doing brilliant at the moment. But if Dublin or I I, I think someone mentioned in your comments in the last week, if Dublin are worried about load, where are we gone, Aaron? I'm sorry, like, but it's just you know, it's, it's baffling really that uh, we've got to that stage. In many ways, Lowe have done brilliant. No doubt about it. Mickey Hart has done an outstanding job. But if Dublin are worried about the team that won Division 3 last season, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 just, it's just baffling. I, I don't know what it is. It's confusing in many ways. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's very confusing. And I, I think we're talking about Dublin too much. Uh, on a side note, Derry seemed to be motoring on well. Even when they weren't performing well last night, they still grounded out the win against the so-called best team in the, the league at the start of the season in this particular division. So, well done to Derry. And there seem to be other players stepping up. Lachlan Murray, Ocean McWilliams coming off the bench. Noel Toner scored now three goals and five points for play. So, there seems to be other players stepping up. And that seemed to be Derry's problem last year when going on in the championship last season. So, that needs credit as well. Not just about Dublin's feelings, but about how well Derry are doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, and, and fair play to Derry. Like, I worried about them at half time when they're five points down. I've seen a lot of similarities to the Galway game last year. Um, and I, and I did. You, you were looking at it and thinking in the first half they con- they they continued on being as defensive as they were being, and you were thinking is is there a plan B? Like, they can't keep playing this way because Dublin will just win comfortably, and and it was very comfortable for Dublin. But fair play in the second half they kicked on. They got in Dublin's faces. They pressed up on kickouts. Their bench made a big impact. Garrett McKinless, young O'Sheen McWilliams, I thought made a, a big impact. Lakeland Murray as well. So I think it shows that they really do have a bit more sort of variety maybe to the game so far this year. That when the goings got tough and they fell behind, they've had a game plan to turn it around. And I think that 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 should you know boast Derry fans quite well. You know for the rest of the season. And even look at the new players coming in, like Owen McAvoy as well at fullback. He's 19 years of age. He did it excellent mm-hmm. as well last night. Um, Owen Lynch and goal did very well. Garth McKinless obviously coming off the bench. The midfield, Connor Glass and Emma Bradley got a stranglehold in the second half. And it looked to be Brian Fenton dominating in the first half. And to change that and the switch, that was brilliant. And Rory Gallagher mentioned in the post-match interview, they didn't perform particularly well. But the main thing is they still won the game. Against a Dublin side, let's Let's not fool ourselves, Aaron. This is a Dublin side that won the six in a row. They were up there with all our semi finals. Like, this Dublin team have reached all our semi final every year since 2010. And Derry still beat them without performing mm-hmm. too well. So that just shows you, like, there's still something in this Derry team. And they're performing well. Oshie McWilliams coming off the bench, Lachlan Murray, brilliant performances. And the youngsters, well, like, Lachlan Murray. I, I think he won all our minor title in 2020. So that yeah. would make him 20 years of age. And to come off the bench, and he's essentially nearly the winning score. Take some effort in various them and very good performance from him coming onto the pitch. So, yeah, even Noel Lachlan is doing well around the pitch as, as well as that. Benny Heron might not have scored. I don't think he scored last night, but did pretty well. Shane McGuigan didn't score from play, but still, when the going got tough, he was there to, you know, pound to double the mistakes and he did pretty well as well. So, yeah, very good performance from Derry. And is there claims now that a lot championship could be there for them? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, look, they, they, they won it last year and I think they'll be, they'll certainly be one of the favourites, especially when you look at the, the standards they've set so far this year and obviously the new additions to their team that they found as well and some of the younger players. So I think all looks very rosy in the garden from a from a dairy point of view and it does very much wrap up promotion promotion is all all but delivered now as well from a from a dairy perspective uh moving on it was limerick 17 points mead to 11 uh, a game that went right down to the war and uh, not many people seeing this coming 
um, at the end of the weekend. Brian Donovan with a, a late, late point there to, to snatch the draw from a Limerick perspective, a game that ebbed and flowed from what I heard. I think Limerick were leading at certain points. Uh, I think they were leading at half time, and Mead were in a spot of bother. They turned it around and then Limerick came back. But we didn't see this coming. I think, you know, everyone looked at this as a nailed on win for Mead, mostly because of how poor Limerick have been in the Oakland four games of the league. But look, Limerick, you know, they make sure they're not the. You know, you know, they don't join Waterford and being, um, you know, one of the counties that have lost every game so far. I think they are gone already, but they've given themselves a bit of a, you know, I suppose a bit of fight. There's a bit of fight in this side getting the draw. It's funny, Aaron, because you would have said that um, before this game, particularly in Limerick, are completely gone. And I would have been one fella to say that as well. But look at it logically. Look at the last few games, Dave Kildare and Clare. Two sides are on two points at the moment. Limerick are on a point. If they manage to win one of those, they're safe. They're, they're, if they beat both, I'm sorry, they're safe. And look at Kildare so far, going down to the Gaelic rounds. And Clare at the moment, look, that could be anybody's game. Clare and Limerick is the last game of the season. If Limerick managed to beat Kildare, there's still a possibility there. I'm telling you, yeah. like Kildare, the Limerick are still safe enough in fairness to them. So, you, this was a brilliant result and we said this about Mead over the last few weeks they did do well in the first two games against Cork and Clare but the caveat to that was the goals and the goals saved them again today I, I don't know it's just something with this Mead team we thought they were making progress but it seems to be if they don't get a goal they're screwed I, I don't know what, what it is uh, about me, why can't they get points of the board? In fairness to Jordan Morris, he's one of the top scorers from playing the top two divisions, so he's doing well in fairness to them. But again, goal saved them today. I, I don't know what, what, what it was. Like, I would have said to John even during the week on my podcast, this is a nail on win. Well, I just brush this aside. Me, they're going to win this game easily. I didn't expect Limer to come out and perform like this in fairness to them. And maybe this, this is a question did Limer perform really well? Or did we be just so poor in that first half? Like, you know, it's yeah, it's 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 a really strange result considering how poor Limerick were last week against Cork. They could see his six goals against Cork last week. Mm. And to put up that performance, that was pretty good. And maybe that's a bad light on the B team that starts so well and now their form is starting to peter out. Yeah, it's a it's a hard one to know, all right. Like I think I think they you know, realistically, they are, they are at the level I think they're at. Like, I, I think I think that's that that goes without saying. Um, and I think in the opening two matches, as you said, probably a bit too reliant on goals. But I think you have to you have to give credit to, to Limerick for for battling hard. And you know, as as we said, we would have looked at it and thought it's it looks very very hard for Limerick to to get out of it. But as you said, like they've they've definitely given themselves a, a bit of a fighting chance going into going into those final two games and. I suppose from a me perspective, a little bit worrying, but they have five points on the board. I think they, they are okay in terms of avoiding relegation, but unfortunately for them, um, you know, the, the promotion race does seem all but gone. It was allowed to 11, Kildare 12 points. Kildare suffer their fourth defeat of the season, four defeats now in five games. It's baffling really to know what on earth has happened to Kildare, to be perfectly honest. Um, and to be honest, this result didn't even surprise me. Like, I backed loud to be Kildare. Um, I'm not too sure what your own prediction was going into this, but I think most people backed loud to be Kildare, which wouldn't have been the case. Like, let's not forget, Kildare beat loud in the in the championship last year by, I think, 20-odd points. And loud cruised the victory here. It is. And look at, look at this game and follow me on Scorpio. Like, it looked like loud were in complete control of it. And on a side note, yeah, me and John both agreed that loud would win this game. Because Kildare's form is absolutely dreadful. And no, because of Daniel Mimna's goal for Longford in Division we got the Division 3 later, but Daniel Mimna's goal against Longford, because of that, Kildare are now the only team in the whole National League not to score a goal. That just shows you, like, it's it's really baffling what's happened to Kildare at the moment. It's it's crazy in many ways. Um yeah, I, I don't know how they get out of it. Their next game is against Limerick and the Gaelic Groves. And look at Limerick's fight against me today. That's no given, no, that Kildare will win that. Like, geez, I, look, it is really strange for Kildare because last season, they challenged Mayo all the way in the qualifiers. 
They were so competitive in Division 1, including a draw against Kerry. All Ireland champions Kerry in Newbridge. And now yeah. they can't even score a goal in Division 2. <laughs> what has happened? It's, it's, it's mad how they've regressed, really. But, yeah, I know Kildare performed pretty poorly and um, there should be a lot of talk about that. But for now, they were around Sambo Roy for, nearly, for more than half the game today. And they still dominated Kildare. That just shows that they progressed as a team massively under Mickey Hart. And fair play to them. They've done absolutely brilliant over the last few weeks. Like, like we talked about their attack over the last um, while. And yeah, they've definitely shown what they were made of today. Connor Grimes getting a goal. Darby Collin, two points. Pretty good performance from him. Tommy Dorland with one too. He's another guy that's come in for Lowe's. So yeah, Lowe's have done absolutely brilliant in fairness yeah. to the Division 2 ones. They're going into a game now against Cork. A game that could see third place in the league. Third place. What, what an achievement for them. What, what a story. And yeah, Mickey Hart definitely deserves a praise for this low showing. But for Kildare, the, the terrible run of form continues. And not only that about Loud as well. If they, if they do beat Cork, regardless of what happens between Mead and Dublin, they'll go into the final game against Dublin with a chance to get into Division 1, if they, provided they beat Dublin. Um, now, it could depend on, on Mead, Loud. If, if Dublin were to get beat by Mead, Loud could possibly get a draw against Dublin and, and go up. It, it, it sounds crazy, though, but I honestly do think Loud will give will give Dublin a, a, a quite a tough game, which I, I couldn't have said, I couldn't have imagined saying a couple of weeks ago, um, to be perfectly honest. It's crazy. Imagine oh, imagine the scenes. I can't imagine low beating Dublin in Crow Park. I, can't, I just can't. <laughs> oh, like how well low they're playing and how poor Dublin are playing could happen. I'll tell you, I don't want to upset you, but it could happen. Yeah, I think I'll need a bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're, la- we're laughing now, but. It could be a reality in the next few weeks now, but oh, like no, but I'm just imagining you now the scenes of the scenes of promotion, low game promoted the division, division one and crop. Oh man, that'd be that'd be just that'd be just peak. It, it'd be unbelievable peak. Um, no, but regardless, regardless of um, the fairy day, low for perform well in fairness to them. They've done brilliant yeah. over the last few weeks, but. To be honest, if Lowe were to beat Dublin and Crow Park, that'd be a tad embarrassing for you, I'd imagine, Aaron. Oh, yeah. No, it, it definitely it definitely would be, 100%. Um, but I suppose we'll cross that bridge maybe when it does come. Uh, John says Kildare are in Tatters. I remember games where Kildare will be playing great football. And Gavin says, will Kildare win the Talchin Cup? And to be honest with you, even with the form that they're in, I don't even know if they would, to be honest with you. I think they'd... You know, I think a lot of Division 3 teams might even fancy a, a cut of Kildare, even the likes of Down, possibly, would fancy their chances. You know, like when you're looking at some of the teams who might maybe be in there, I suppose we'll, we'll have to see when that time comes. But, like, as, as we were saying there with Kildare, like, we, we were talking about it last week, and we might even be repeating ourselves next week as well, like four defeats and five. Actually, looking at it from last year, I think they've they've lost five of the last six in total. When you think of the Leinster final and the and the defeat to Mayo, um, there was no shame in those defeats. I know they were hammered quite comfortably by Dublin, but yeah, it's it's baffling to know. Like, is it a management issue? Is it you know, like I know they're, they're missing the odd couple of players here and there, but like the the levels just seem to have completely fallen off, and it is baffling. It is, and when you look at the management team, there are Johnny Doyle, Dermot Orley. Uh, Anthony Rainbow, like those are guys that live and breathe Kildare football. And the fact it's gone down to this level, I mean, it's when you look at Kildare, they won the under 20 championship in 2018. There's clearly players coming through. You have Jimmy Hyland, you have Jack Robinson, you have all of them coming through, and they're still struggling to score even a goal, even yeah. create a goal chance in this division. I mean, it's mad, it really is mad, Aaron. And I don't know when it's going to stop. Will they win the Tag Team Cup? Look, even look at Cavan's farm at the moment. Look at down. I don't think they will even beat those sides. If, I, if I'm quite honest, I don't think they will. So, to be honest, I'd be really, really worried if I was a Kildare fan. Look at the performances in particular. Yeah, no, me, me too. Me too. Like, I think 
think they're they're looking at it, and you know who would have thought that Kildare going going away to Limerick next week would be a a must win game in terms of of them keeping themselves in the division, um and as and as you were saying there, like with how good they've they've looked at times, um last year in the league, like it, it is quite baffling, and and realistically only Kildare fans will be able to to know what's going on. Like they, they didn't have Jimmy Hoyland available, like he's obviously been missing through injury, but they've still had a lot of their other players like Daniel Flynn. Derek here one, Neil Flynn, um, a lot of these lads are playing and they seem to be shipping a lot of goals as well. Like they conceded what three goals versus Cork, I think it was. Um, two goals today versus Loud. Um, you know, they're they're shipping a lot of goals, and that that that's also the worrying sign. It is, yeah. And uh, like even shipping like even the dairy game that asked him, they were white. You know, the Cork game, white, low today, gone out of it. And to be honest, like they wouldn't have beaten Clare if it wasn't for a certain refereeing decision in the McMahon not bouncing the ball twice or something like that. If that if the referee would have given the free given the decision the other way, Kildare would be going into this week bottom of Division Two. Mm-hmm. Like it's incredible, really, Aaron. It's it's baffling how how in many ways how clear a team that's challenged Dublin and um have been so consistent in Division 2 over the last few seasons and have performed well over the last few weeks. How did they lose to Kildare? You know, it's it's ridiculous, really. And, you know, I don't know how Kildare fix this problem, but they have to fix it pronto. Yeah, sort your life out. Says Kildare look like a team who got no coaching, fair play to Loud. And uh, Tom says, Mickey's last dance, Loud winning Lancer. I mean, if, if that was to happen, it would be the greatest... GA story of all time, and I think, uh, I think, yeah, you know, Mickey Hart, you would, you would have to say he's complete Gaelic football if if he does that. You know, that's the last, the last sort of thing, you know, on on his to do list if he was ma- if he was able to do that. But, but um, probably, probably still a long shot if if I'm being realistically honest. Um, but yeah, last but not least in Division Two, it was Clare one a Cork three ten. So Cork with a big big result there against Clare, thirteen goals now. In your last uh, five or your last four league matches, so I mean things are looking very good from Cork. I mean you're you're brushing teams aside, you're beating them comfortably. Like, is there still hope that you could still get promoted, or what's the feeling? In in regards to the first question, yeah, I I really really um really delighted with the team over the last few weeks. And Kieran McCarthy from the sort of star actually mentioned this on Twitter. We wouldn't have seen this uh, Cork team deliver these type of scorelines in the last few seasons. Like we've seen one year we beat Waterford by a pint or something like that. It was embarrassing. But now we're brushing teams aside. It's it's brilliant to see. It's brilliant performances. We wore down at half time and then the players just dug in and got a result out of it. And fair play to them. I mean, it's a tough place like Ennis. So fair play to them. As regards to the second question, if Dublin would have beaten Derry, I don't want to too too much pressure on Dublin, but if Dublin would have beaten Derry last night, then um Cork would have had a chance to go up. But um Derry beat them last, so um no, there's no chance now. Um, the hope was that Dublin would beat Derry and then we'd go into a final bout against Derry in the last day for Pride. We'd be low, of course, in Parky Keeve. But, of course, yeah, that's that's gone now. But to say, to say that, look, if we finish third Division 2 behind Derry and Dublin, it's no shame. Look, we'll go into the Munster Championship. We'll go in um, with our tails up. Like, if we could get eight points, eight points, if we finish on eight points uh, before the Derry game, that would be mission accomplished for me. Look, we'll go into the Derry game, perform well, get to hopefully get to a monster final low this year against Kerry, put in a good performance. And then, um, yeah, things are looking on the up. Look, this was going to be a project under John Cleary over the last few seasons. Kevin Walsh is starting to build something in the, in the last uh, few weeks or so. We're pushing teams aside. Like, we, could, we scored six goals against the Limerick team today who me struggle against. So that, that just shows you we're making progress under this management team. And take me back when I was talking to you last year, Aaron, about um, us losing to me by eight points last season. And it was all doom and gloom. We were going down to Division 3, going down to the top team cup. And it was just depressing. This season, it's all changed. And I'm delighted. I'm delighted as a car fan. And yeah, long may it continue. But, um, but yeah, there is a sense of um, you know regret about the me game in the first game. If we just didn't could see those goals as sloppily, sloppily as we did in the first game, maybe we would have gone into the last weekend 
with a potential promotion charge. But look, it is it is what it is, and we're improving. Absolutely, absolutely. And looking at the Division 2 table, so that's how it looks there with Derry uh, on top with five wins from five. Dublin are in second with eight points. Cork and Loud in third and fourth with six points. Mead with five points. And Kildare, Clare and Limerick very much in the relegation, uh, I suppose, survival hunt there. Uh, looking at some of the results from Division 3, so it's Fermanagh 211, Tipperary 8 points, uh, Offaly 214, Longford 116, Westmead 427, Antrim 8 points. That's a, a bizarre scoreline really there. Uh, Cavan 214, down 110. And uh, looking at the Division 3 table then, so Cavan sitting on top with 10 points, Fermanagh with 8 points, Westmead and down boat lock level with 6, Offaly in 5th with 6 points, Antrim are in sixth with two points and Tipperary and Longford both still in the relegation zone with a point each. So uh, what were your thoughts on some of the results there? The Antrim one stands out. Um, yeah, that was unbelievably yeah. baffling. Like, uh, I was talking to Kevin Jordan. I heard on the line, basically. It was, definitely. And I was talking to Kevin during the week. I uh, had a bit of a point with him, uh, I think, uh, sometime this week. And uh, yeah, I was chatting about uh, Kevin's attack fifth best attack in the division before this began and there was reasons to be optimistic but then he was point he pointed out to me the defense and that was the big thing and it definitely showed today 427 for an Ulster team to concede that's mad you know it really is it credits to Westmead John Heston scoring one what was it a uh, one four or one six from play today that was incredible for him pretty pretty good and he's rolling back the years as many people would say look it's the division table I think having her up and um, well done to John McMahon there he's Coming back to Division Two, battle big time. So I, I think um, all's well up there anyway. So pretty good uh, achievement for them. But I think it's going to be a battle between Fermanagh, Down, Offaly, and um, Westmead. I think it's going to be a battle for them to get second. Then Fermanagh are looking in a good position. I think Fermanagh have nineteen different scores across the five games. So that's a pretty good tally for them. So pretty good for them. I definitely at this stage I'd back Fermanagh to go up with Cavan. So pretty good achievement for them. To go down, I'm going to say Longford. Like they showed a lot of fight against Offaly today, and I think they'll beat Antrim at the last day of the season. So I think it's going to be Antrim and Tipperary that will go down to Division 4. Yeah, Gavin says here, most people thought Fermanagh would be relegated and they could be promoted. Yeah, no, like I I, I was fully expecting Fermanagh to, to be in a relegation battle. I always felt like they, they'd have enough to stay up, but fair play to them. Look, four wins from five games. Um, they're, they're digging out results. They're scoring late goals. Um, and I think they've been very, very impressed, uh, you know, with them. And um, I, th I think they, you know, they're clearly making progress. Uh, John says, I'm surprised with Fermanagh, but well done to them. And um, uh, John also, maybe in relation to Cork earlier, Cork doing very well, should have beaten Dublin. And they're uh, definitely improving. The big one is how they'll do versus Kerry. Cork are playing well, but is it enough to, to challenge Kerry? Maybe a quick one on, on that, actually. Like, where... Do you think Cork are at in terms of playing Kerry? Like, I think we would both still have Kerry as the favourites, obviously. But do you think Cork bridge, could, could bridge that gap down and make it a competitive game for a full 70 minutes? Or what do you think? The hope is, yes, we can. Like, when you look at, um, when you look at, uh, like, we're talking about loud challenging Dublin and stuff like that uh, previously in the chat. So, like, um, why can't we challenge Kerry? You know, we, we give them a right good battle. I suppose the caveat, the game is in Killarney this year if we reach the Munster final, of course. But the pleasing aspect of it this season is we push Clare, Limerick. So it's that we struggled against the Munster over the past few seasons. We pushed them aside with ease over the last two weeks. So the hope is now we have to challenge Kerry. And, um, yeah, I think these players are definitely able to do it. Sean Powder has definitely found a position at centre-forward. Chris O'Jones is doing well. Look, as well as that, we were out Sherlock today against Clare. And still, yeah. we put up a big score in against them. So, you know, it's it's pretty good showing from Cork. And yeah, all on the up, but the hope is we do challenge Kerry in the next few seasons. But I think to do that, we have to get to Division 1. And I think with Johnny Gall coming down next year, I think there's the hope that we can come back to Division 1 for the first time since 2016. That is definitely the hope. Do that first, and then we can challenge Kerry. Yeah, Tom says uh, it's been a crazy National League from 1-4, to four, still so much to be played for. Yeah, like I think Cavan and Derry, I think, are the only two teams that are pretty much done and dusted, and they've obviously won every game. Um, like I don't, I don't think Derry are like mathematically 
promoted, but I think they they pretty much are like in in all reality. Um, moving on to Division Four, um, looking at some of the results there: Leash two thirteen, Waterford one five, Carlow thirteen points, London nine points, Wicklow fifteen points, Leitrim one nine, big win for Wicklow there, and Sligo one twenty, Wexford three eight. So uh, some big results for the likes of Wicklow and Sligo. And Leash and Carlo, I suppose, winning those games was probably expected, in fairness. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely so. Like, uh, I've seen, um, actually, uh, Alliance League Sunday in the background of week low were celebrating mad after that win against Leach. And why not? Very good, very good win. And I actually back week low to win in Ockham today and a uh, very good result for them. Uh, Carlo London, pretty, pretty um, much of a meaningless game. Uh, Watford against uh, Leash. Yeah, Leash were easily going to win that game. And Sligo beating Wexford, that was a pretty good result for Sligo. So I think the promotion race is definitely hot enough, but I think Wicklow are definitely in um, the hot seat now. Like Ocean McConville, is, that's three wins in a row now for Leach, correct me, or for Wicklow, correct me if I'm wrong. So that's yeah, they beat, they beat Leash as well. They beat Leash as well. So they've beaten yeah. the teams around them. They are definitely, yeah, and pretty good results. And I think they still have to play Watford Wicklow. So they could easily mm. rack up a big score there. So I think Wicklow are definitely in the driving seat to go up. And what a job Ocean McConville is doing. And it just goes to show, Aaron, you need a few games to get settled into a team. And then you could go ahead for later. And Ocean McConville is definitely doing that in a fair play to him. Yeah, like just looking at Wicklow's last two games, they play Wexford and Waterford in the last two games, mm-hmm. both away from home, just looking at it on Wikipedia there. So... Um, definitely be be two tough games for for, for for Wicklow. Well, I suppose the Wexford game will definitely be a, a tough test, but they've certainly shown they, they have that resolve coming through the, the last two games. Looking at the Division 4 table then, so Leash and Sligo both sitting on top still with eight points, four wins from five matches. Wicklow with seven points, definitely putting themselves back in the promotion. Hunt, Leitrim in fourth with six points. Wexford and Carlo both locked level with five points and London and Waterford cut adrift there in seventh and eighth. Looking at it there, who would be your call for the two sides to go up going into the final two matches? Look, in Wicklow's final two fixtures, I'm going to go Wicklow and I'm going to stick with Sligo. I'm going to go Sligo and Wicklow to go up. I think Leash, there's still a bit of doubt there. Um, Leitrim are relying a lot on Keith Bourne, so I don't think they'll go up. So I find predictions probably going to be Sligo and Wicklow, Leash to slip down. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Wicklow and Leash. I think. Um, just looking at it there, like looking at Leash's last two fixtures, they play Leitrim away, London away. Yeah, that's a hard one to know. Like you could possibly see a scenario where a team with ten points doesn't go up, which I think would be, um, you know, is a rarity in itself. But I think we we have seen it happen in the National League before. John says Wicklow doing well should beat uh, Wexford. Um, well, yeah, I suppose. We'll go ahead and uh, and wrap this up here. Cheers, anyone who obviously tuned into the show. Um, any picks for player of the week or any players who stood out? I suppose player of the week, I'm going to go maybe the match I watched last night, Brendan Rodgers for Derry. I thought he was um, mm-hmm. instrumental for Derry midfield. And uh, yeah, very, very good performance from him. And uh, yeah, maybe an honorable mention, Sean Powder, who got two goals today for Cork. So yeah, I think those are two honorable mentions for player of the week. Perfect, perfect. Well, Matthew, cheers very much for, for coming on. Cheers anyone who tuned in to the stream. Let us know your thoughts and opinions on this weekend's games. Make sure to tune in for the preview show for uh, Match Day 6, uh, which will be out, well, actually, in a, about a week and a half time, actually, because there's no there's no football games on next week. But we will do a hurling preview at some point. So make sure to, to tune in for that. And uh, Matthew, cheers for coming on. Thanks very much, Aaron, as always.